My presentation is um, divided into five chapters. Uh, it's the general design history, the belt construction, the safety, the spices, and the inspection. In the 1960s and 70s, we had an unacceptable high number of accidents in the underground mining, and uh, part of, uh, of these problems were conveyor belt related. So we had to do something so until uh, the middle of 1970s, we um, uh, had just uh, fire-resistant conveyor belts, and we had to change this because even if they are called fire-resistant, they would still work. In 1975, uh, Phoenix introduced uh, the world's first self-extinguishing steel cord conveyor belt. At that time, the um, requirements were as per the new Dean standard uh, 22129, which uh, is um, more or less equal to the MT668 um, that uh, is in force in China today. Masterpiece in 1986. This is uh, until today the strongest underground conveyor belt in the world. It's a uh, Phenocard ST7500. And this system is really uh, revolutionary because uh, we are conveying coal from 800 meters underground straight to the surface. It's uh, just one belt. The, uh, the distance is uh, almost four kilometers. We do not only convey the uh, coal up 2,000 tons per hour, but also convey uh, the tailings back underground on the very same belt. Talking about the strongest underground belt in the world, it may be worthwhile to mention the strongest conveyor belt overall in the world, which is even stronger. It's an uh, ST7800, which was uh, supplied in 1999. So, uh, more than 90% of that system is underground. <laughs> Maybe this, uh, this fits to our um, uh, conference here. And uh, Mr. Reyes yesterday said that his uh, tenure to mine is uh, 2,500 meters above sea level, so this is uh, almost the same. We are conveying copper ore from uh, 3,200 meters. Um, uh, above sea level down uh, 1,300 meters. It is actually not consuming power, but generating power. Now coming to the um, Chongzhong slope conveyor belt. This shows where the mine is, uh, close to the city of uh, Jinchong, 1,668 meters long. We have uh, two loading points here. The uh, capacity is 1,650 tons per hour with a, a troughing angle of uh, 30 degrees. The belt speed is uh, 4 meters per second and the maximum slope is uh, 30 degrees. The conveying lift is uh, 192 meters. So the inside of the conveyor belt. Um, the, the belt is 1,400 millimeter wide and it's uh, type ST 3,500, which means that every millimeter of belt width has a strength of 3,500 newtons. Self-extinguishing as per MT-147, that is the Chinese standard uh, 15 years ago. The um, number of cords is 90 and the, uh, the pitch is 15 millimeters the belt weight uh, 72 and belt thickness 27 millimeters. And um, looking at the uh, illustration, we have the uh, rubber cover, which is uh, the, the wear side where the, the um, coal uh, is sitting on. Then we have the uh, Phenotech reinforcement, these transverse cords, uh, which are tailor-made to this application uh, regarding diameter of the cords and uh, also pitch of the cords. Then we have the, um, the, the core rubber or the bonding rubber, which is a special rubber for uh, the um, bond between steel and rubber. We used 8.2 millimeter diameter steel cords, uh, hot dip uh, galvanized and uh, so-called open construction. And um, open is important uh, for a complete rubberization. So in combination with the, the right rubber compound, which during the vulcanization process gets really uh, fluid, very, very thin. Um, it, uh, it fills all the gaps between the wires. And this is uh, most important for the durability of, um, of the conveyor belt. And, uh, important is the uh, dynamic pull-out strength. 
那么第二右边呢，就是在动态情况下，我们要强行的将这个钢索抽出，是需要的力度。所以我们就是在这个抽拉二万两万次以后，那么是什么样的？是不是还能够实现这个抽出的目的？那么之后呢，我们也会谈到这个。So you can do multiple repairs, and uh, and still this bond will not suffer. Also regarding moisture migration, so it, it may happen that that you have a damage somewhere, and um, and water or moisture gets inside the steel cord. And uh, then it, it moves inside the belt, and you don't see it. And some, somewhere it would lead to corrosion where you don't see it, uh, because you can't see it from outside because there's rubber on it. And uh, this also is prevented. So there's no uh, moisture uh, migration inside the belt. Talking about the uh, Finotech reinforcement, which we have on, on both sides, um, this system is tripling uh, the resistance to, to impact damage. One uh, main task was that, uh, of course, we had to increase dramatically the safety of the belt. But on the other hand, um, the belt should show the same practical performance as, as the old grade. This um, task was uh, achieved, so we can, can say that, that all physical parameters of the belts are identical or better to what we had with the old just uh, fire resistant. Great. For the Chongzhong belt, it was agreed to test as per MT-147, and later it was uh, became the MT-450, and now it's the MT-668, but that time we did the tests as per MT-147. The first was the uh, surface resistant, the um, spirit burner flame test with an afterglow of less than five seconds, the uh, high energy propane burner test, with the uh, undamaged remaining length of uh, 250 millimeters and the uh, drum friction test uh, where the belt should show no glow and uh, the uh, surface temperature of the drum should not exceed 325 degrees centigrade. So all this is about eliminating explosion by static uh, electricity, no flame ignition, no flame propagation, and uh, also not endanger health. Not part of the approval, but uh, worth mentioning is the uh, oxygen index test. This is really kind of a fingerprint. It does not show if belt is good or bad, but it shows if it's the same as has been approved and it's identical with what you have supplied later for the application for the mine. The um, safety tests were done in Germany and in China, and uh, the um, Chinese delegation was uh, uh, supervising all the, all the tests. And uh, finally, we got the, uh, the approval from uh, the Shanghai uh, test center that, that everything had been passed. And um, uh, even the bell then was embossed with the um, MT-147 standard. The whole belt weighs 420 tons, and obviously we could not supply the belt in one piece, so we did this in 21 uh, pieces, and they had to be spliced on, um, on side, three step splice. Um, there is no steel cord connected to another. It's, it's, it, all the, all the um, uh, stresses are transferred by, by the rubber. Uh, the splice is 2.45 meters long. We used uh, fresh material from Germany, presses from Germany, and uh, also it was supervised by, by German engineers. We did also a 20 second splice just for testing. We did this on site because uh, the customer was scared that uh, because of the, say, of the different environment, like, like uh, uh, dust or, or uh, uh, humidity, etc. Uh, the splice may have suffered, so we did uh, 20 second splice, and uh, everything was absolutely fine with the test. We also did uh, dynamic uh, tests on the splices. We did that in, uh, in Germany, as per DN22110. This is uh, um, uh, an 18 meter long belt. And um, it has to, um, to run for 180,000 times, 180,000 times around that pulley. And during these 180,000 times, uh, the load cycles vary 10,000 times. So the belt uh, ran absolutely smoothly. It 
was regularly inspected during the 15 years of uh, operation. Um, so two years ago, um, they had a severe accident uh, at the mine, and the valve was, was completely damaged on the part. And that was uh, a chance for us to take uh, 20 meters of the 15-year-old valve out, including a splice. And we did, we did all the tests we did originally, so all the fire tests, uh, abrasion resistance, uh, tensile strength, whatsoever, all these tests we did again. And um, so the uh, results were really amazing. Um, if you look at these um, light blue columns, uh, this was, was the uh, value agreed for the original, for the new belt. And the dark blue is what we found after 15 years of operation and uh, 67 million tons of ROM coal. So the wear of the rubber was just one millimeter, so it's, almost, it's nothing. And uh, the supply strength and the belt breaking strength are still above what we agreed for the new belt. After that long, long period, um, so that was really, really good. And we, we had in 1993, we put this uh, chart um, next to the conveyor in the mine, and we, uh, we said that uh, the service life will be 16 years. Uh, and, uh, I'm sure many people s uh, thought, well, it's just impossible. I mean, three years, okay, five years would be fine, but 16 years, never. And, uh, well, so we have kept the promise, and, and uh, we are really proud of that. So, thank you very much for your Thank you, Bernard. Do we have some questions for Bernard? Yeah, if I had time, I would be glad to, to present more. Of, of that and, and more advantages, but I think uh, whatever you say and whatever somebody says, but if you prove that your belt uh, works 16 years and it's still like new, uh, I mean, uh, what better argument can you have? I mean, is, uh, so I think this is really, this shows really the, the advantage. At, at the end, this counts, I think, not, not what you're saying, but you, I mean, we have proven that, that this is superior. Few of us work as well after 16 years. <laughs> One more question.